Formula One history looks set to repeat itself as Mercedes once again seem to have civil war on their hands. The German manufacturer experienced a Formula One team's worst nightmare after Lewis Hamilton and George Russell collided on the opening lap of the Qatar Grand Prix. But how do Mercedes avoid this spiraling into a repeat of the Hamilton Rosberg era? You'd think after coming together, a lot of the tension would have been dissipated, but with Mercedes giving both of their drivers a two year contract extension earlier on in the season, I can only see it getting worse from here. I mean, both drivers are absolutely desperate to win. They're desperate to show that they can be the top driver in that Mercedes car. However, I do think there is just one small thing that might come to Mercedes rescue and actually solve their current driver problem. Because let's face it, Mercedes have more than enough problems to deal with right now. They are desperate to claw their way back up to the top of the standings and seeing Max Verstappen win race after race, title after title has to really hurt the Mercedes team. I mean, after the disappointment of the 2021 season, I know they won the Constructors title, but losing out on the driver's title in that manner to the Red Bull team. And then on top of that, compounding the poor decisions designing the 2022 car and holding on to that zero pod idea for way too long. I know it was great to see George Russell win in Brazil, but I think that was the catalyst for them holding on to the zero pod at the beginning of the season and just costing them even more time when it was obvious that Red Bull and Ferrari already had better designs coming into this season. But now they also have the problem of their driver lineup. And it wasn't something I saw coming because at first George was an absolute dream come true for Mercedes. He was Formula 2 champion. He looked incredibly quick as soon as he came into Formula 1 and was actually beating out some of the best drivers on the grid right now in that Formula 2 season. So he looked like the real deal moving forward and he was a model professional off track. He always talked really eloquently and he always towed the party line for Mercedes. He felt like a true successor to Lewis Hamilton in that Mercedes team. So there came a point where they couldn't keep him at Williams any longer, really. I know that Hamilton seemed in favour of keeping Bottas in the team because Bottas was a clear number two. Hamilton had his wingman that had been there for him when he'd won championship after championship. But Russell's head would have been turned. He was so good in that Williams car that maybe a McLaren or a Red Bull would have tried to get George Russell in. So they had to promote him into the Mercedes team. They had to get him in as quickly as possible. And I think Mercedes probably imagined Lewis Hamilton would be walking towards the door by now and maybe retiring from Formula One, but not winning in 2021, not getting that record-breaking eighth title has actually rejuvenated Lewis Hamilton's desire to stay on the grid for longer. I think if he walks to an eighth title, is he really that fired up about Formula One? I mean, we're seeing it from Max Verstappen already where he's quite despondent about how easy the victories are coming to him. Now Lewis Hamilton has to really work for that eighth title, has a real battle on his hands. He's fired up about staying on the grid for longer, which is maybe not what George Russell was promised. He was probably promised a path to being on a pedestal in that Mercedes team and being the clear number one at Mercedes as soon as Lewis Hamilton moved aside. He was incredibly patient with the Mercedes team and in his words, he waited too long at Williams for that shot at the secondary Mercedes seat. And now he's seeing Verstappen, Norris, Leclerc be the poster boys of their team, even Alex Albon now that he's gone to the Williams team to replace him. And he wants to have his shot. He wants to have his team that he can really build around and he wants to be the clear number one at Mercedes but instead they have two strong drivers with no clear number one and actually at first in the 2022 season this was a blessing they were applauded for having the best driver lineup on the grid and moving ahead of Ferrari in that category Russell secured the points whilst Hamilton tried to develop the 2022 car it felt like it was all going quite well at Mercedes especially last year in particular and that's what actually kept them close to Ferrari in the constructor standings but in Inevitably, what's happened this season with two strong drivers, they're both incredibly competitive and both finding their pace inside of that new look Mercedes car. So they start to occupy the same parts of the track as each other. They start to qualify near one another. And it seems like every race weekend, we see them side by side at one point or another. And inevitably, something dramatic was going to happen at some point. They were getting closer and closer to each other, especially over the last three or four races this season. Hamilton was frustrated behind George Russell Russell in Singapore. Obviously, Russell then put it into the wall towards the end, but you could see Lewis Hamilton so racy behind George Russell. If George Russell was
wasn't there, would Lewis Hamilton have gone on to win that Singapore Grand Prix? That's a debate for another day. Then in Japan, they get dangerously close to one another with George Russell lunging up the inside of Lewis Hamilton. And again, it looked like they were going to touch, but they just about managed to be safe. I mean, I even said in my Qatar preview and predictions that the Mercedes team had to be really careful about how these two were racing each other at the moment because it was getting closer and closer and closer to something happening. The tension was building for some time between them and it finally came to a peak in Qatar, both of them with exceptional pace throughout the weekend. Again, both of them occupying the same piece of track because they were both looking really good for a really solid performance this weekend. I mean, the Mercedes probably could have both been on the podium, but instead the worst happens. And to be fair, Lewis Hamilton took the blame. He held his hands up straight away after seeing a replay of the incident. He apologized to George Russell straight away after the Grand Prix. And I think that just took a little bit of the sting out of the situation. Had Hamilton not taken responsibility, could have gotten quite ugly, both drivers blaming each other, Mercedes having to deal with it behind the scenes. But instead, we saw them embrace and we saw them fix the fact that they can still work as a team off the track. And they're still trying to get that Mercedes car again to the level of the Red Bull car. But it doesn't really fix what happened on track, especially for George Russell, because to be fair to him, he put in a great performance and showed exactly what Mercedes missed out on in the Qatar weekend. The pace was clearly there for him that weekend. I mean, George Russell even came out after the Grand Prix and said he had the possibility of not just challenging for podiums, but possibly Max Verstappen for the victory, which just raises the tension for him even further. I know that within the team, luckily they still beat out Ferrari because Carlos Sainz wasn't taking part, so Lewis Hamilton's DNF didn't mean too much in terms Terms of the constructors but that's no consolidation for George Russell because he will be so frustrated at what he lost especially after a few errors this season he has been trying so hard in that Mercedes car we've heard radio messages of rogue tactics and strategies coming across because he just really wants to achieve something for Mercedes in that car in this 2023 season because I think this season has been a little bit of a reality check that he isn't yet displacing Lewis Hamilton from that Mercedes team and there's more frustration around not achieving what he was possibly expecting coming into Mercedes. You know, he saw Valtteri Bottas get a few victories in the Mercedes car when he thought he should have been in that Mercedes car instead. Now he's come into a Mercedes car that isn't capable of fighting for victories. He has the one-off chances in Brazil, in Singapore, in Qatar, and he hasn't been able to take two of the three of those. So even though George Russell's performances since he's joined the Mercedes team have been of a very, very high level, he is absolutely desperate for more. And that frustration, even though they've collided, the problem still remains. So they'll just collide again. And the problems will get even bigger when championships are on the line and they're taking victories off one another in that Mercedes team. I mean, Lewis Hamilton has been there before, for goodness sake. I mean, the Kimi Raikkonen title comes to mind where he and Fernando Alonso were bickering inside of that McLaren team and took points off of one another. So Kimi Raikkonen just snuck to a title. And then, of course, the years with Nico Rosberg. And that's the real parallels because it's in the Mercedes team between 2014 and 2016, it was just an absolute nightmare for Mercedes to deal with. You have two ultra competitive drivers on a similar level of ability. I would say that Lewis Hamilton still has the edge in the races compared to George Russell, but George Russell in terms of qualifying in the last few races has been really quick in comparison to his teammates. So they're both getting a very similar level of performance out of the Mercedes car. They both have the same goal in mind of being the number one in the team, winning races, winning championships in the future. And they're absolutely determined to achieve the best possible result for themselves without really looking at the Mercedes perspective a lot of the time. So what can Mercedes actually do, if anything, to save themselves from an all-out civil war? Well, as I said at the beginning of the video, they've got both drivers for two more years. The easiest fix is to pick a number one. If the car gets quicker, you'd imagine they would probably want Lewis to win his eighth world championship because that looks amazing for Mercedes that they've been able to guide Lewis Hamilton to a record-breaking eighth title. The problem that they have, though, is surely they wouldn't be able to choose a number one. I mean, George Russell won't play second fiddle to Lewis Hamilton because he wants to prove he's the right choice. He wants to prove that he can be the world championship winner for Mercedes moving forward. And what better way to prove that than displacing the old championship winner 
winner at Mercedes. And then Lewis Hamilton will never step aside for George Russell because he wants more accolades and more records as his career comes towards an end. So they can't pick a number one because George is quick enough to hold his own and Lewis Hamilton is not going to do that. However, in my opinion, Mercedes have one saving grace up their sleeve, a document that was put together during the Hamilton Rosberg years known as the team's racing intent. It's designed to establish the team's guidelines, putting the team first when discussing how everyone approaches a race weekend, from Toto Wolff to the engineers to the drivers themselves. And George Russell would have had to have seen this and signed off on it when he joined Mercedes. And Lewis Hamilton was one of the drivers that put this racing intent document together so that the drivers don't cost the team. And that has to be the basis of their next move. They have to hope that there is something in there to save this situation. Otherwise, the tension between these two will continue to rise. The two will continue to cost the team more and more points moving forwards. And it becomes harder and harder to fix this situation the longer and longer it is left. Especially, as I said, if that Mercedes car improves and they start to take victories off one another and possible championship battles off of one another, everything becomes a hell of a lot harder and the entire team becomes horrible to work in for Mercedes. But considering that I'm not a Mercedes fan... I'm all up for an internal war. I would be really interested to see who would come out on top between George Russell and Lewis Hamilton if they do just keep batting heads with each other. But I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments down below. How do Mercedes save this situation? What do they need to do with Lewis Hamilton and George Russell moving forwards? And if you've enjoyed this video, I also put together a video on Max Verstappen and the records that he can still break in the final five Grand Prix of this season. So click that link and I'll see you over there.